Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see Introduction to Tama Standards and Heat Exchanger, its types. Our flagship course is Master Static Equipment Design and PV Elite and Master Welded Storage Tank as per API 650. We have curated courses to suit your learning needs, so do visit our learning platform on scutoid.thinkific.com. Uh, I think hope all of you know that what TEMA stands for. Anybody can write? What is the full form of TEMA? Yes, I am absolutely right. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Great, great, great. So Tubular Exchanger Manufacturers Association. So the name itself suggests, you know, who has prepared the standard? The manufacturers. Even the code, ASME, is written by manufacturer. Okay. So the people who are doing it, they are writing. Okay. That is the difference. Okay. And that is how these documents are so important. It's, it is written for us. It is written to make our life more easier. You know, the design easier, fabrication easier. So if you, are, if you know how to use them, your life is much, much easier. Okay. The target for Tema is shell and tube. You know? These are the tubular heat exchangers. So shell and tube heat exchanger is what you know uh, we are going to refer. The 90% of total heat exchangers are shell and tube. Okay, so that is how it's very, very important. Okay. Now let us talk about the structure structure of tema okay so tema have uh, 10 sections okay and there is one appendix okay which is a non mandatory appendix now earlier it used to be a mandatory appendix for tube sheet design but now it's non mandatory uhx have become has become a mandatory requirement okay so 10 sections and one non mandatory appendix that is the structure now we'll see the different sections and their uses okay so section one talks about nomenclature okay it covers the nomenclature which is used in tema okay so first before reading any code or standard it should be clear with the nomenclature okay so that is the thing which we should start with okay section two talks about fabrication tolerances okay so all the fabrication related requirement the tolerance mainly is covered in section two okay section three is general fabrication and performance okay it talks about uh the typical tema specification sheet you know which we get as an input that format is given in this section three okay Nameplate requirement, performance guarantee related requirement, you will find in section three. Okay. Section four talks about installation, operation. Um, you'll also see a chapter on bolt torque tightening sequence. That also is there. You know? One more very important thing which covered in section four is the for leak testing. What are the flanges? we have to make you know they are the flange other than the flange which is part of the job we need to make some additional flange to do the hydro testing okay because we want to see the leakage area we want to find that so we want access of that okay so we want that area to be free for inspection so we need a temporary flange so that we can get access so you'll find that there. Section five is very, very important. All your uh, design related requirement mainly you will find here. Okay, everything related to you know, shell thickness, minimum shell thickness requirement, tube uh, thickness, then uh, baffle, baffle thickness, tie rod numbers, lots of things, you know, there. So section five. Okay. Uh, section six is very, very important. It's related to flow induced vibration. Okay. So it talks about tube vibration. It also talks about baffle damage due to vibration. You know? So typically there are uh, 
four methods you know which uh, is used to determine this vibration okay uh, so all these four including like uh, effect of vortex shedding everything is given in this section okay so it's a very very important section uh, section 7 talks about thermal relation okay so the problems related to heat transfer okay so how to calculate how to calculate lmtd okay which we used for uh, q calculation that heat transfer calculation so you will find it here uh, you'll also find fouling's effect of fouling on heat transfer there are lots of chart given so mainly it is used by thermal engineer you know who is uh, designing sizing that heat exchanger for us to provide us the input okay so that is what is there here uh section eight uh talks about physical properties of lots of fluids which we'll use for heat exchanger okay section nine uh general information you will find that bold related uh dimensions table d5 which we use for flange design lots of other useful tables are there in section nine okay section 10 is also very very important so we'll go through these sections when we do this course okay so whatever is important for us we see that okay in non-mandatory appendix it's tube sheet design okay right now what is heat exchange okay we talked about structure of Tema. let us now see some basics you know what is the heat exchanger what is the definition what is the purpose of a heat exchanger any one of you very simple you know don't i don't want in very detail neil is uh, writing exchange heat absolutely right the purpose is to heat transfer so change the liquid if phase a uh, phase change is not the intention but it may happen because of heat transfer yes akash absolutely right device to exchange heat heat transfer from two fluids to exchange absolutely right most of you are bang on so it's very simple transfer heat between two fluids okay that is the purpose of an of a heat exchanger okay it is a static equipment static because there is no rotary part okay uh subham it's not to create temperature difference but temperature difference is already there and because of that that heat transfer happens okay so typical heat exchanger you might have seen already will built upon that okay uh what you see on the screen can anybody tell me what type it is yes shell and tube but be absolutely right abhishek neil uh sriram jason absolutely right okay we'll talk about you know why we call BEU and what are the different other types okay so we'll see the typical function what happens tube side fluid this is how the tube side fluid will flow there will be an inlet nozzle there will be an outlet nozzle so if BU type the flow will come from one nozzle and it will go out okay it's youtube so it's in the same side your output is also there okay how the shell side fluid will travel like this so the flow will go there are baffles you know to divert the fluid such that we get maximum heat transfer okay otherwise if the flow is moving in a very straight path it will not be able to interact with tubes so your heat transfer will not happen properly okay so to maximize the heat transfer we you know provide baffles it also has lots of other advantages like supporting your tubes okay okay now we are on 
classification you know we talked about that there are other types of heat exchanger than shell and tube so we'll very shortly very briefly we'll talk about what are the advantages and disadvantages of other types okay double pipe or we also called hairpin okay plate type heat exchanger air coolers okay electrical heater so many of you already share that you are working on air cooler so that is also a kind of heat exchanger so shell up tube anyway we are going to build upon the next thing which we'll talk about is hairpin type okay how this hairpin is different than typical heat exchanger see hairpin is kind of you know two pipes that is the reason we also call double pipe you know? there is external pipe within that there is one more uh, smaller dia pipe and from that the heat transfer happens you know so it's like tube and another tube on that uh, not exactly youtube type but yes you know uh, the tubes which will you know, flowing they will form you know a u type because there will be two tube sheet in youtube we have only one tube sheet here there are tube tube sheet and the tubes will be connected so it's a very good uh, you know for if we are like if you have a very high temperature okay see if you just open this and keep straight it's nothing but a fixed type heat exchanger you know fixed tube sheet type heat exchanger okay there are tube sheet outside and there are tubes and then surrounding there is pipe okay but because it's bended the biggest problem of fixed type tube sheet which is temperature is taken care because now because of bending it has become now flexible okay and because of smaller size these are always very smaller size no? typically by pipe we are able to make the shell so size is very small so size is small gives us freedom to go with high pressure okay? so good for high pressure high temperature okay and if your design is counter current that both the current tube side current and the shell side current are moving in opposite direction then this is the best thing you know it will ensure complete counter currents so second second advantage is what we saw it's very good for high end high pressure and high temperature okay it also has very low pressure drop so that is another advantage okay even the fouling fluids you know, whatever fouling happens because of the lower size that fouling is also not there typically not there very less compared to shell and tube so with that also you know it's very good so all advantages okay so why then go for shell and tube if, if it's uh, you know so good there is no pressure problem there is no temperature problem there is no uh, pressure drop which is a typical an uh, issue in shell and tube the main problem the disadvantage is the total flow rate small volume absolutely right mh yes akash absolutely right small configuration small volume so in plant we need volume okay we need high flow which is not possible in this okay that is good for very low flow so but for low flow it's very good you know it's it has very good efficiency uh, it, can, it can take high pressure temperature so if your flow requirement is less you can always go with this type of heat exchangers okay now the second plate type okay uh, we have small video also so that you can you know, see if you have not seen any plate type heat exchangers so it will clarify that how it works okay So you see there are two end plates and in between there are lots of small thickness plates to promote your heat exchange okay it's so lots of plate and then it's bolted together okay 
Now, if you see the flow, you know, like see. So one side of the plate, there will be cold fluid. Other side, there will be hot fluid. So that plate will become the medium for heat transfer. Okay. So see, one side cold, one side heated. So this is how that heat transfer will happen you know, with the plate type heat exchanger. Okay. Now, these type of heat exchangers are very good in heat transfer. Okay. Very compact. That is the second biggest advantage. The very compact. Okay. So now what is the problem? What is the disadvantage? High pressure drop. Okay. What is the second disadvantage? Fouling. It cannot take care of any fouling. Okay. We have to use clean fluids here. Okay. It is not good for high pressure. Yes, cost, if we compare with the flow, it will be high than your shell and tube. Okay. The second thing, high pressure. It cannot take high pressure. Okay. It is always used for low pressure application. So these are the limitation for a plate type. Now the next air cooler heat exchanger. Okay. So just let us clear the construction. So now in this type of these type of heat exchanger, one medium is air. Okay. So which you are getting from atmosphere, only one fluid you have to handle through your heat exchanger. Okay. So air will cool whatever liquid you have. You know? So that is typically a cooling purpose. Cooling tower is different, Akash. But it also acts as a cooling. No, we have we always use it for cooling. So typically it will be the end of the plant, whatever operation you had. Now you want to cool that liquid and store. So these are kind of end equipments in the power plant. You cool it and then you the fluid will be taken for storage. Okay, typically. Uh, we also have small videos. So you know, it will clarify that there are nozzles, two headers at the end. Okay, two headers, one here, other here, connected with nozzle uh, tubes, lots of tubes. Okay, so the flow will enter. Now there are fans. It may be there, may not be there. Okay, it's uh, if it's forced by forced cooling, then uh, there will be fans which will you know try to cool it cool the liquid faster otherwise it will be natural flow so you can see that flow is coming like this in the tubes going to the next header coming back and then you know getting exited from the other nozzle okay so this is air cooled this application of these type is very you know limited so it limits its uses we know that the one other medium can be only air okay so we can use it only for cooling. Okay. So whatever process fluid we have, we can cool it by using air coolers. Okay. There can be fin tubes to uh, accelerate that cooling. You know, if we are not able to achieve, we'll have fumes, or fins are surrounding the tubes. Okay. So to accelerate that cooling. Now, another type is electrical. Okay. So these are typically used like if you have a very big storage tank and you want to the liquid which is stored that process fluid is very viscous okay? then we put some heaters so that it uh, by heating the viscosity will reduce and we'll be able to flow that okay through the output okay so that is the purpose of this electrical heat exchanger so this also again very limited use It can be even connected to a pipe like this. Okay, so the fluid which is coming will be heated by the electric heater and it will again flow. Right. So, yes, there are helical coil heat exchanger also, Subham. There are lots of different types. So these are the major types, you know. For in depth training and to learn more about these courses, 
Register with the link, in the description.